Hey VC, what's going on? Welcome back. This is Hubtoons. I am Mike, and this looks weird. Why is the... L I don't know. This looks weird. <laughs> I'm doing a little different lighting tonight, because my ring light has finally... <laughs> it's on the floor over there. It's seen its better days. So I'm doing a little different lighting. It's a little darker. I hope it's okay. It looks all right. It's just weird. Um, welcome back, you guys. Uh, Vinyl Community, I hope you guys are all doing well. I am a little bit late to my Record Store Day Black Friday Vinyl Finds. Everyone else is running home and getting those videos made, and I just i been tired and I didn't really feel like doing it. Um, but whatever. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have a beer. Hey, you guys ever had this? It's pretty good. It's not good. Um, so I'm gonna have a couple of beers here and I have been, so Friday, today, this is, so this is going up Sunday. Sunday morning, uh, Friday, Black Friday. Oh, sorry. Okay. Slow down. Um, so Black Friday record store day, uh, you know, and we all see it. There's nothing on this list I like. These lists get worse and worse. This is all bullshit. There's nothing that, this is the worst record store day list of all time. There's always stuff on these lists for people. <laughs> it Just because you don't see something on the list that you like doesn't mean there's not stuff on there that other people like. And I think they do a very good job of curating these lists to give a broad spectrum of record buyers stuff to choose from. Not every record store list are you going to buy 12 things. Not every record store list are you going to buy three things. And, you know, and honestly, yeah, you know what? Sometimes there might be nothing. I find that very hard to believe, that you could not find one thing on this list that is not something you really want. Now, is there stuff that you can live without? <laughs> Absolutely. There is nothing on this list that I could not have lived without. Maybe two things where I would have been like, oh, I didn't get this. I'm going to go online and order it. Otherwise, if I didn't get it, totally fine. Totally fine with it. Um, so <laughs> I bought a lot is what I'm getting at. <laughs> Uh, I to, to be honest, uh, my birthday was uh, last week, and I got some money for my birthday. I also put a lot of, you know, I, I go through the list, I pick everything out, I get the pricing, and I see how much I'm planning on budgeting. Budgeting. And I put that money aside, and I save the money. Nothing goes on a credit card. I Everything's paid for in cash. I don't feel guilty at all. So if there's some, if there's shit I don't need, and I buy it, I don't feel guilty. But I, I that being said, I am trying to pare down what I buy and what I don't buy. Because for a while there, I was buying like every jazz, li live jazz reissue. And some of it sounded like shit. Some of it I n would never listen to again. And some of it I just don't need. So I kind of stopped buying like every random live record store release that's out there. I don't listen to a lot of live records, whether it's jazz or rock and roll. So, more jazz than rock, but I just, it's stuff I'm not going to listen to. And I, you know, I'm starting to get space issues. <laughs> so I, I did, I do pare down what I'm going to buy that, <laughs> that way, kind of. Um, so that, that, that said, I, I, I had some birthday money and you know, what do I want to buy with my birthday money? records. So Black Friday record store day, I wake up Thanksgiving, we had 23 people over on Thanksgiving, I was cooking all day. Uh, it was a huge success. Everyone seemed to have a good time. I had a, quite a few bottles of wine and I was really tired. And I slept in about an hour longer than I normally would on Black Friday record store day. An hour later is literally like 7 30. We we are very lucky here in Chicago. We have God, I mean I, I bet I have 15 record stores within a half hour of my house. Um they almost all of them participate in Record Store Day. 
So you spread that out among everyone who's buying records and no one has a super long line. You know, there's a couple that probably have long lines. Uh, Reckless Records is a huge record store down in the Lakeview area. They're very popular. They're one of the biggest record stores in the city. They probably get a long line. Um, but my place, Squeezebox Records up in Evanston, Illinois, a mile from my house, I can walk there. Um, he normally gets, he'll normally get 100 people in line, but he opens at 10. I usually get there at 8. So the longest I ever wait is two hours. I, I don't get there in the dark. <laughs> I get there, you know, at 8 o'clock, 8.15 in the morning, and I'm usually like, I'm usually about, I'll be like 15th to 20th in line if I get there at 8 in the morning, two hours before he opens, which is totally fine for me. Like I said, if I don't get something I want, I'm totally fine with it. I'm not going to run out and buy something online just because I didn't get it. I'm definitely not going to another store because I just don't do the whole bouncing around. I, I go to one store. If I get what I get, I'm totally fine. And I like the people who go there. We always have a really good time. We hang out in line. We talk about records. We talk about... It's the same people every year. Same people every record store day. And we have a good time. And we all know each other now. And, you know, it's fun. And that I, that's part of the whole record store day thing that I really, really like. It's just meeting people and seeing people and talking to people that I, you know, don't see all the time. So I get there this year. I woke up a little bit late. I get to the store at I got there at like five minutes to nine he opens at 10 I was the fourth person in line and I got there an hour before he opens I was shocked absolutely shocked I mean normally by that point there'd be at least 30 people in line maybe even more walked up put my chair down beautiful a beautiful mid-40s day in Chicago. The sun was out, so weather was not an issue. We, we were 40-degree weather in Chicago in November. It was balmy. It was beautiful. Um, I'm guessing maybe the post-Thanksgiving day kind of hangover. People weren't up early and coming out, um, but it was great. I, I got there an hour before, and I was fourth in line. Um, I did go back to the record store today just to mingle around and see what was available and he had a lot of stuff on the shelf still available all the box sets were still there the grateful dead the war the jerry garcia box sets those were all still on the shelf um and those were kind of the big ticket items uh i know he got like 15 or 16 of the grateful deads so that's a lot <laughs> so he still had a bunch of those he said he had a lot of stuff that i was there to get he still had it today but then I was talking to him, and he, I said, I asked him, I was like, was it a little slow yesterday? And he said, no. He's, he's like, I sold. He said it turned out to be as good as any Black Friday record store day. Uh, he, so, and, and it did. It seemed very slow to me. But he said it got busier later in the day. So maybe that was the you know Thanksgiving Day hangover. People just came out later. So that was good to see because, you know, that whole... I see some of you guys' videos. Man, I, Mazzy and Bob Bradley, you guys are up at like four in the morning. You're sitting in pitch black out and, you know, and that's fun. And then, you know, and you're meeting people and that's great. Um, but man, I, I don't get up that early. Um, and I'm very lucky. Like I said, I'm very, very lucky. I live in a city that is very record friendly. We have stores everywhere. Nine minutes and I haven't shown a record. Let's do it. Um, so I'm going to start with a um, couple of the great finds and then uh, I got a few box sets and then the last one is what I consider to be the sleeper of, of Record Store Day, uh, a record that I don't think anyone was talking about before Record Store Day and now I see a few videos popping up and they, it was on my list but I kind of cut it out. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. But then I saw some videos early and people were talking about it, so I picked it up. So that's kind of like my sleeper of Black Friday Record Store Day. I'll show that last. And I got some box sets and um, a few of the things that I took off my list, because there were a few. <laughs> I mean, I got a lot. 
But, uh, you know, I didn't go for the Ultravox uh, Stephen Wilson mix. I think that's going to be a um, mass release, so I can get that some other time. I didn't go with the Joe Strummer Live. Um, I picked it up, and it felt very flimsy, and I'm kind of questioning the sound quality of it, so I'm waiting to see what people how people feel about the Joe, Joe Strummer. I'm all in on Joe Strummer. I love Joe Strummer. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to wait to see what the reviews of it, because it was $27, and I was kind of like, well, that's one you could probably just wait and see what people say. Uh, I, I'll probably end up getting it. Another one was the Hot Tuna. Um, I love Hot Tuna. I prefer my Hot Tuna acoustic, but um, it that, it's a great album. Uh, I'll probably, and again, it's going to get a mass release. It's not just a record store day thing, so I can pick that up another time. Um, I, a, a couple of the Motown records. I wanted uh, Party, which was the Martha and the Vandellas. I, I, I wanted that. I kind of passed on it, but again, it's going to be one of those records that it's going to be available. They're not just doing it for record store day. It's going to be available, but that will be one that I definitely pick up. I I, I, re I was really happy that they had a lot of Motown stuff. I think there was a Supremes, a Martha and Vandellas, and maybe a Temptations? So the, well, I think we had like three Motown reissues, which is great to see. We need more Motown on Record Store Day. But again, they're going to get mass released, so we'll, we'll, we'll get those. Um, I'll pick them up another time. So the first one, uh, first record I picked up, um, and this was the first record I opened when I got home. Um, this is... This is uh, Pucho and his Latin soul brothers. This is super freak. This is fun. You guys, this is fun. If you guys slept on it, go grab it. It is a just, it is a Latin jazz record. It opens with a medley of Superfly, Pusherman, and Freddy's Dead. And it's awesome. It's like 16 minutes and it's all instrumental and it's fun, fun, fun. It is really, really good. Um, I haven't listened to the second side. I listened to the side uh, A side, and it's great, absolutely great. Um, but I highly, highly recommend this. This is Super Freak, Pucho, and his Latin Soul Brothers. Great artwork too. Really, really cool. Highly recommend that. That probably one of my favorite finds of the whole thing. Um, I did listen to this this afternoon. This is I always grab these jazz dispensary records. They're absolutely funky and fun and great, great records. I will show you. This is Haunted High, and it's on a very, very cool, very cool vinyl. Excellent, excellent stuff. Really cool. They always release their stuff on excellent, like, interesting color vinyl, which I don't n normally need. I mean, I, I would buy them if they weren't. <laughs> Um, but they sound really, really good. Jazz Dispensary does great, great stuff. Um, and these compilations that they do for Record Store Day are top-notch. Uh, next, I picked this up because this band's, this band's records, they're, they're not cheap. If you can find them, I think a lot of their stuff isn't even out on vinyl. But this is, uh, this is Soul Coughing. I really like Soul Coughing. It is a uh, Black Friday record store on uh, yellow vinyl, the best of Soul Coughing. I am not a, uh, on vinyl for the first time. I'm not a big uh, comp fan. I don't usually buy greatest hits or best ofs, but given the price of their uh, their vinyl records, like uh, original pressings, um, I, I grabbed this and it was $19.99, double record. Cannot go wrong with that. Check out Soul Coughing. Kind of post-punky, funky stuff. Really cool band. And like I said, you can't find their... You can't find their uh, their re uh, original records. Um, I did go with, the, as, I, as I said earlier, that I'm trying to avoid the live jazz stuff. Well, guess what? I bought some live jazz. I got the Ahmad Jamal. Uh, this is a really interesting series. I have not listened to these yet, but... Probably gonna do it after this video. Uh, this is Emerald Knights uh, live at the Penthouse in Seattle, sixty-five, sixty-six, and this is sixty-three, sixty-four. This is uh, going to be an ongoing series, so there's gonna be more in the series, <laughs> and it's ongoing. Um, mixed by, uh, done by Bernie Grunman. Uh, these these are gonna be absolutely fantastic. I 
cannot wait to get this entire series. I love Ahmad Jamal's piano playing. I like him live. I have a couple of his records. Um, some of them I like, some I don't like. Um, but I, I, I think his live stuff is absolutely terrific. So I'm going to uh, continue to get this uh, series. So these are the first two in the series. More to come. I will um, definitely be checking them all out. I hit my funny bone earlier tonight. I was pulling out some records and I whacked. I have like a little ledge like right here and I whacked my elbow on it. And I'm telling you my whole, my whole arm went numb and I started to sweat and I got dizzy. And I walked out into the other room and my partner just starts laughing at me. I was like, it, but it still hurts. Like I, I think, I think I'm going to be bruised. And he's like, it's your funny bone. You don't bruise your funny. Like, no, it, I did this like two hours ago and it's still tender. It, it was more than my funny bone. I'm telling you, I thought I was dying. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I picked up this. This is um, Edgar, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, Edgar Froche. Uh, he was in uh, Tangerine Dream. This is very electronic, progressive music. I think that's actually how they describe it. Uh, an essential masterpiece recommended for progressive electronic fans. Uh, this is on purple vinyl. I have not opened it yet. It's digitally remastered. Um, I have heard this record before. It's not for everybody. It's electronic. It's progressive. Sometimes I like shit like this. I mean, sometimes I just like to throw a record like this on and do stuff around the house. It's not something I'm going to like sit down and listen to it with headphones, although that would probably be a great way to listen to it. Um, cool, cool, interesting stuff. Uh, I have not listened to it yet. Okay, box sets. Um, I am all in on these, uh, Grateful Dead box sets. This is probably why I got up early and went. I do not want to miss any of these. Uh, you guys, I have them. I have them all. And so I do not want to miss any of these. These, these are from, uh, 1972. This is, uh, Wembley Empire, uh, the Wembley Empire Pool uh, uh, shows, uh, limited to uh, 10,000. They're great. They're absolutely great. Uh, they kind of have a digital touch to them. They sound absolutely amazing. And like I said, I got the others. And they do one, I think they do one every record store day. One for Black Friday and, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, really cool artwork. I'll open it up. Um, just top notch, top notch. Um, get a little sticker. I save the hype sticker, which I don't normally do. Uh, it's got a nice little essay about the band and little blurbs. And then the in the inner sleeves are, you know, they're paper, but they're fun artwork. Uh, the, I think they're all this way. They're all, um, and they're just on black vinyl, um, but really really well done this is a four lp set and you know not not cheap but also could be a lot worse uh and they do a spectacular job these things sound amazing um really really cool stuff so i am super happy to get another one of these into the collection uh next up i did um well i'll just stick with the grateful dead theme I got the Jerry Garcia Band, Hampton Coliseum, 1991. I was at the show, so I absolutely had to get it. It's a limited edition of 7,500, uh, 580-gram uh, LPs uh, featuring uh, Bruce Hornsby. And these are, this was, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> these were wonderful, wonderful shows. I love the Grateful Dead, but... There was something sweet, sweet, sweet sounding about the uh, Garcia band, especially in this period of 90, 91, 92. Fantastic stuff. He does a cover of How Sweet It Is, and mostly covers um, uh, his own R Run for the Roses, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, I Second That Emotion, Brothers and Sisters, Ain't No Bread in the Bread Box, one of my absolutely favorite songs. Bright Side of the Road, uh, the Van Morrison song, Shining Star, Waiting for a Miracle. I mean, just, I shall be released. I cannot wait to open this. Uh, it's, this is going to be great. It's on uh, Round Records, and 
I am super, super excited to get this. And it wasn't, it wasn't crazy expensive. I think, I want to say 130 for a five record set. It's not bad. Uh, next up, the other box set I got. And this was the one that had I not got this box set, I probably would have gone online and got it. Same with same with the Grateful Dead because I have the whole I have the whole set. So, I, but this was the one that I really really wanted. Um, like I said, my um, my local shop had like sixteen of the Grateful Dead box sets, so I knew I was getting that. And I think he had like ten or twelve of the um, Garcia too, but he told me he only had three of these. <laughs> he was expecting more, but he only had three, and. Um, that's the uh, Eric Burden and War box set. Uh, I had to get this, especially after last year's War box set. War that War box set um, was that over the summer, or was that last year? I can't remember. Uh, but after that release, what a spectacular release that was! That's Rhino Records, I believe. This is Rhino also. Uh, this one only has three records in it because that's all he did. Um, first of all, how about that? How about that? cover photo <laughs> right i i just love this uh cover photo i think it's fantastic so this is eric burden war the complete collection is eric burden underrated i i don't know maybe he's not i mean being in the animals and then doing this stuff maybe he's not underrated but it seems like people just don't talk about how great his vocals are he is one of the best blues soul singers around i absolutely love him the records themselves are not quite as, they're not quite, well, no, they're fine. I, I'm not going to bitch about, they just seem a little thinner than the other ones and the, uh, the other box set, and they're all matte, which is fine. Um, this is Love is All Around. Uh, great, great record. This is really good. Uh, Lee Oscar is still in the band. Yep. And um this is great. This is a really cool record. They're all in polyline sleeves. It's no big deal because if they're not, I would just replace them. Uh, this one's on red, uh, translucent red. Um, really cool record. This, this has, um, what does this have on? This says, uh, Love is All Around, Tobacco Road, A Day in the Life. It's a really good record. A cover of Paint It Black. Uh, this one I haven't listened to yet. I've actually I don't even know if I've heard this record. This is a double record, uh, a Black Man's Burden with Eric, Eric Burden and War. I don't think I've heard this record, um, but I'm gonna check it out very very soon. Eric, what's going on? Um, this is on. Oh, when did they do this? Oh, this is on translucent yellow. The reason I'm showing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing uh, the colored vinyl. It's because I remember last year when I didn't show the colored vinyl on the war box set, somebody left a nasty comment in the uh, comment section saying, why didn't you show the color? Because I really don't care if they're colored or black. Um, but I'm going to check this out. I got, I, I, that one I have not listened to. This is a great album. I mean, I've loved this album for years. This is Eric Burden Declares War. This is the big one with uh, Spill the Wine. Uh, the vision, uh, the vision of Rasan is so good, so good. It's a song dedicated to uh, Roland Kirk. Uh, Tobacco Road is also on here. Uh, Blues for Mem Memphis Slim. Uh, You're no stranger. This is a absolutely fantastic record. And what color vinyl do we have here? We have ooh, it's kind of a kind of a cabernet color. <laughs> Upside down. Um, what a great box set. Um, I have only listened to this one so far. And it sounds great. Like I said, I think Rhino did it again. And it's fantastic. This is a nice little, nice little photo thing. And it's got like a little essay and stuff with it. Absolutely fantastic. You guys. Yeah, Rhino did it. Um. This, this was my, what I really, really wanted. And then my sleeper of the whole record store day is this. And it's not in here because it's on the turntable. I've been playing it all afternoon. This is Enmedio uh, Sriracha. 
Okay, this is, this is Garrett Sriracho. Uh, I think he also goes by Gary Sriracho. Uh, I was fairly familiar with him. I, I've actually heard some of his music before. He is um, he's on the most recent Jazz is Dead release. Um, Jazz is Dead is a terrific label uh, with Adrian Young, who kind of curates this whole thing. Uh, they're up to 14 or 15 um, installments in the series, and I believe uh, Garrett Sriracho is either on 14 or 15, now, one of the most recent ones. He recorded this album in 1973, I want to say. I want to say 73. He recorded this and never did anything after it, um, and Adrian Young has actually got him out and doing stuff again, and if you like Brazilian jazz, Latin jazz, check out that Jazz is Dead series. It's absolutely wonderful. This, <laughs> this is great. Absolutely great. Uh, it's a gatefold. Um, really, really cool record. It is not audiophile quality, so if you're an audiophile, don't even waste your time. You're going to hate this, even though the music is great. It's spectacular. I, I absolutely love it. I've been playing it all afternoon. Um, I've seen a couple other people talk about it. The Waxed, uh, Rob the Wax has talked about it. I'm glad he picked it up because it's really in his wheelhouse. He would love it. If you guys like Latin jazz, Latin music, man, this is terrific. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. It's on black vinyl. It's not on anything fun or crazy. Um, excellent. Sleeper of the entire record store day. I absolutely love it. This and the Latin Soul Brothers, really, really cool records. And honestly, I think this was like $22. It was very cheap. It was not an expensive release. So, <laughs> is that enough? <laughs> uh, you guys, thanks for watching. I love Record Store Day. You know, people poo-poo it and diss on it and complain about scalpers. You know, what? who cares? Just go out and have a good time. Get some great sounding music. Great music. Have a good time waiting in line, talking to people and hanging out. My record store does a phenomenal job. They are the nicest people. You walk in, you tell them what you want. You go to you go to a window, you tell them what you want. You take what you get and you go to the register. And it's super easy. It's fun. It's it's a good time. Um, so shout out to uh, Squeezebox Records, Tim and everyone there. They do a absolutely phenomenal job I, I i don't understand the whole poo-pooing of uh record store day uh but you know whatever people poo-poo about everything in life especially nowadays so you guys stay well questions comments snide remarks down in the comment section and i will talk to you soon you guys be well